Well, we found the Thompson's gazelles. As you can see, some of them are hiding in the grass, and they are quite short, so sometimes they're a bit difficult to see. And you can see there's also some topi around. And uh, now, Thompson's gazelle is a, a strange name for an antelope. Thompson? Who's Thompson? Why are you called Thompson's gazelles? So, it is, they are named after an explorer who explored, or the, one of the first British explorers to explore this part of the world. His name was Joseph Thompson. And he was quite a unique explorer uh, for, for that time for that time period because he, he, he didn't actually end up in fights um, with the local people or with his porters which was which was which was very unique and uh, his motto while exploring Africa was that uh, he who goes gently goes safely and he who goes safely goes far which I think was probably a lot beyond his years so that's where the Thompson's gazelle gets their name from Joseph Thompson. Uh, he, he was a Scottish geologist uh, and explorer. And so he who goes gently goes safely, he who goes f safely goes far. I think that is an absolutely splen splendid quote. So that's where the Thompson's gazelle get their name from. So often referred to as Tommies out here uh, and of course the favorite food of an animal we're yet to see so far in the Mara, the cheetah. But hopefully we will spot a cheetah on these vast open plains uh, shortly. Oh, pigs is under. Warthogs. And a, a massive herd of topi. So let's go a little bit closer. Now, I want to get close to a topi so I can show you uh, the glands on its face. Now, unfortunately, the tommies are just a little bit too far. So I know a lot of you are asking about cheetah. So generally they, they're further uh, towards the south, towards the Tanzanian border. And uh, at the moment we haven't managed to get that far yet. We're still exploring uh, uh, this area uh, around the Mara River. But we will definitely get down there soon. So here we go. Now all the topi. Hi topes. Now once we get close you can actually see uh, specifically on the males. Um, that that preorbital gland that they'll use to mark. Hello, big boy. How's that, Zander? Bit more. So you can see the the size difference as well. And you see the guy with the mud on his horns over there. Yeah, straight opposite me. Yeah. So there, there's a male, and you can see uh, quite a lot of antelope species will, will roll sort of rub their, their horns in mud to try and make themselves look more impressive to the ladies and, and, and keep the boys at bay. But you can see those glands. You see those little holes below his eye. So there we go. And they use those to scent mark. Now, we, we've spoken quite a bit about bot flies. And you'll notice topi are often sort of nodding their heads and snorting. Uh, and that is because they are very, very often sort of uh, have bot fly larvae, uh, larvae in their nasal cavities uh, feeding off the mucus. So they, they'll often see them sort of bobbing their heads and snorting. And uh, I don't think we, have we put it? No, the warthog yesterday it's escaped us, didn't it, Sunday? Well, we've got some warthog that are a bit more out in the open. Oh, Monique saying those pointy horns look sharp. Indeed they are. And um, uh, is, is there a rutting season for topi? Um, yeah. when, when is it? Sorry? That's, that's, uh, November. November. Yeah. So uh, Monique will be seeing the, the male topi use those sharp horns in November uh, when they, they rut and uh, they, they give birth uh, later in the year. But uh, so you can see that actually the youngsters are already quite big. But there's some pigs. Hello, water pigs. Now there are an obscene amount of warthogs in 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 this part of the world. So Douglas was was telling me about an area we drove past yesterday called the graveyard. Now I assumed it must be because the lions kill lots of things, but it's not actually. It's a car graveyard because there are lots of warthog holes there, and many a car has come come to to an end there. Now. Birders, are you ready? Zander, are you ready? Ostriches! A big flock of ostriches in the distance. 
Um, you see, you got them. So that's the, the two things we came to this particular spot to look for were ostriches and, and Thompson's gazelles. So we've managed to get both. How exciting. What are you snorting at? Just snorting at each other. <laughs> well, we've got an interesting handle coming through. A tormented zombie eye was wondering whether we had ostriches. Well, there's your answer. In, indeed we do. Oh, it is just too beautiful. Beautiful here. It's just an incredible amount of, of species and, and, and number of animals that, that we're seeing at the moment. Uh, Nancy's wondering where would ostriches go to roost at night? Uh, Nancy, well, what they do is they'll just settle down in an open area uh, and, and they'll lie down on the ground. Of course, they're unable to climb trees. They're, they're designed for high speed. They can do over 60 kilometers an hour. And uh, a favorite food of, of cheetahs in southern Africa, uh, do the, the, the cheetah hunt ostrich here? Um, yes. yes. So again, another favorite food of the cheetahs here, the ostrich. Now, hopefully at some point we will see them a bit closer to the road. But we are going to now start heading back towards the north. Let me just there we go. And who knows what we're going to find on the way. Oh, I've got a feeling we're going to see a lion. Now, we've got a long way to go to the north, so we're going to start heading there. And while we do that, uh, let's go across to Taylor, who seems like she's done walking for the morning. 